Greetings all, Blue Knight. Welcome back to Ratchet and Clank. Previously, we did a lot of bad tracking, which ultimately led us onto Planet Battalia. And after taking care of its skill points, we got the Metal Detector. One of the more useless gadgets in the game. Yeah, I don't use this thing that much, but I will put it to use when we come across a bolt icon on our adventure. Other than that, I don't really go out of my way to use it that much. Today, we'll be heading to, once we get in the ship, the Gemlik base on the, Orlant on the Atlantis orbit. It's kind of tough to say. But this is what I've been looking forward to for some time now, so I'm not going to waste any more time in trying to get to this planet, because, like I said, I've been looking forward to it. It is time to begin your new assignment. Ah, a photo op by your shiny new shuttle. Terrific idea. Oh, you really are an idiot. What? You are to take that shuttle to the moon base and ambush those two miscreants when they arrive. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who are they again? <sighs> those two! Oh, of course. <laughs> There is just one problem. I'm, uh... Too washed up for ground combat? True. That is why I will be loading you my Starfighter. You can still fly, can't you? It's settled then. You will acquire the Starfighter once you get to the moon. Screw this up, and the endorsement deal is off! <gasps> but that would ruin me! You wouldn't. <laughs> Try. It seems we're on a crash course onto Captain Quark. That's good. He's been needing to get his for some time now. And it looks like it's going to take place here at the Gemlik base. I did not see Direct Ship. We must have missed him. Ah, who knows where Quark is now? If we're going to catch those two, we need a faster ship. Perhaps this space station will supply the ship we need. Well, we're here. Let's go check it out. Okay, so before we start, there's actually two things I want to get from the Gadgetron vendor, if they're available to us, which they are. First, it's going to be the drone device. As well as our second prize. If I can find it. The decoy glove. So, you may have noticed that my bolt counter might have been a bit different from last time. Well, to be honest, this is my third time having to record this video. It's been quite the task to try to do it, too. I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> it's just more space running on my desktop when I'm trying to record. A desktop, my laptop. I wish I had a desktop. So that's why my bolt cutter was a bit dif different. Also, I went ahead of time and prepared my weapon set so I could include spaces for our two new weapons. I can't promise I'll be using them that much. They're two of the more or less favorable weapons to me when I'm playing this game. So we jump down here. Uh, see if I, to, if I have to go around and see if I miss anything, which uh, thankfully I didn't miss anything major right now go across this bridge and for some reason when you cross a bridge it will be put together I think yeah there it is and the gimmick of this level is that there's gonna be these pulsing towers that control some force fields to knock them all out we'll have to use either our devastator or our visibob gun I decided to opt out using the devastator because we use that quite enough as it is so I can make room for showcasing our two new weapons the drone device and the decoy glove First, of course, give you the drone devices. When you uh, select it, you'll have this force field of drones right away, and they will either deflect enemies or well, not deflect enemies. They will deflect projectiles or eliminate enemies, like we did with those Robo Squawkers. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was really looking forward to this, and I have been for some time when I realized we we're closing upon this level. It's not really because of the gameplay, it's pretty straightforward if you 
pay attention to the main gimmick, which is taking out those towers uh, that eliminates the force fields. Uh, it's everything else that this level has going for it. Uh, it's more the atmosphere, the vibe I get whenever I listen to the music and play this level. It's just so mysterious and kind of unsettling at times. Uh, not unsettling to a point where it gives me divers or anything like that, but I just get that kind of vibe from this level. And this is just me talking headcanon, but I always get the feeling that long ago there was something that happened on this base and it always gave out this spooky vibe to me. I'm gonna... I'm gonna shut up for a while and let you listen to the music while I try to proceed a bit to this level because I've kind of been taking it very slow as it is. Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, I hope you understand the vibe I'm getting from whenever I listen to this music. Uh, it's just so, uh, like I said, mysterious and kind of spooky to an extent whenever I see this face. Uh, again, it's just pure headcanon that's talking, but that's what I always think of when I see Gemlek. Uh, it's also one of those levels that where if you can gaze off into space, you can see other spaceships that are flying around, other people just living out their lives while you're just on your big adventure. This is a level that I admittedly didn't think of much at first, but over time it really grew on me. So that's why I like to say it stands out to me personally. So you saw that we have to deal with some of those uh, assault machine gunners. Assault machine gunners, that's kind of a stupid way to put it. But there are machine gunners that we'll have to be careful of as well. However, once you get behind them, they won't retaliate whatsoever. In fact, you can very see clearly on this guy's face that at this moment he knows he's screwed. Why does it try to defend himself? I don't know. <laughs> they just know that they're screwed once you get behind their machine gun turrets. Another trespasser lock so soon. Wow. I didn't think this guy, not this guy, this lock would be so close. Let's see if this one will take me as long as the last one. Hopefully it won't. There we go. Took me a bit longer than I thought it would, but no biggie. Okay, there's another guy over there. Hmm. You know what? I'll put the decoy club here, see if he might react to it. Not close enough. One over there. So we could detract his fire and then sneak up from behind. I also recommend using the Ages of Doom if you're having trouble with that guy. I don't have the decoy club right now. But like I said before, I don't really use the decoy club that much because I don't really need to distract my enemies that often. So it might be very rare for me to use this. So don't be surprised if that doesn't come up on the weapon set too much. In fact, the drone device might come up a bit more than the decoy club itself. That's how much I don't really rely on the decoy device itself. But again, that's just me. Speaking from experience, all this is purely subjective, not objective like I made that mistake in one video. I just got the meanings mixed up when I was saying those words, or at least that one word. You also use these uh, canisters of sorts to 
Cause a chain reaction to, to eliminate any nearby enemies. Should that suit your fancy. So another tower around here. It's right over there. So what you're about to see the Vince Bomb in action. And you're about to see just how powerful this gun is. That's a Blorg space fire that we'll have to go through. Oh, so better be careful. His rage will increase over time, so don't think just because he's missing now doesn't mean that he'll his rockets will catch up to you eventually. For the Devastator, you'll have to use two or three rockets to take it out, but with the Visible Gun, it's a totally different story. One shot! That's how powerful this gun is! And that's just not the Space Fighters. This thing can take out even the strongest of enemies, especially in the late game, or in the end game as well. That's how powerful this is. And if you can get it uh, squeezed by squeezed by in uh, between a group of enemies, the splash damage can take out multiple foes at once. I won't be able to show that off here, those space fires are a bit too far from each other. But if you're able to pull that off, you can eliminate multiple foes in one shot. That's why I love the Visible Gun, and I'll say right now, I love this more than the Devastator. Because one, of its amazing power, two, you can control it, and three, you can take out multiple foes if you're given the chance. So that's why the Visible Gun, the Visible Gun is so reliable. If it wasn't for the Rhino, this would be my favorite gun in the entire game. In fact, it is my favorite gun in the game if we're excluding the Rhino. That's how good the weapon is. So I'll see, I'll take out this guy by hitting that canister. But hopefully you're going to be a believer once you see more of the Vizbomb gun in action because it's, because it's going to come up a lot more in the future, I'll say that much. More of these crates we could use. And we're actually getting a lot of bolts from uh, getting our two new weapons, which is pretty good. I just hope I'll be able to give more screen time to the decoy glove and the drone device that I would regularly do on a, on, on a, normal, ah, on a normal playthrough, which is not that much at all. I'll use the blaster here to, to limit these robo squawkers. These guys aren't any tougher than the than the alien swarmers from early on. They can be taken out by most weapons, or if not all weapons, in one shot. Okay, that's acid, so like with most liquids we've seen thus far, you can jump off it twice, but you'll take damage. On the third attempt, you'll sink. But as I was thinking about the Rolos Walkers, they're not any tougher than the alien swarmers. They can be taken out by just using your Omni Wrench alone. And take it out one blow, might I add. Over there, we see another force field with a gold bolt. To do this, it's a bit complicated if you don't know what you're doing. Use a Visibomb gun, and then shoot a rocket out this window. Wait for a while, and then turn the rocket around. You'll be in range long enough to pull this off, so you don't have to worry about the feed, I guess, fizzing out. Shoot it down this chimney, and there's the force field that's blocking the gold bolt. A bit complicated, yeah, but once you know what you're doing, you'll be able to uh, get this bolt no problem. I think that window's supposed to be a hit of what you're supposed to do, but even then, trying to find that chimney can be a bit, I guess, mysterious if this is your first time playing. However, recently I found out that there is an alternative way to get that gold bolt unlocked early on, as early as beginning the level. If you can shoot that Visible Gun from the landing pad that you came in, you came in on to the chimney that we just went down with the Visible Gun rocket with, then you can deactivate that force field before even stepping away from the landing pad of the Gadgetron vendor. Again, it's something that I just noted recently, but if you know what you're doing ahead, way ahead of time, then you can get that first force field taken down as soon as you... Uh, Exit your ship. Just something I didn't know about for many years. Just something, like I said, I came across recently. So, 
But you veterans out there, if you didn't know about that, well, now you do, if you're watching this. Okay, this part used to trick me a lot when I was a kid. You have to wait for the acid to rise up. And then when it goes down, that's where you make your move. This always caught me off, like I said, when I was younger. But all you have to do is just wait. That's pretty much all there is to it. Ooh, kind of real close there. Kind of wait a bit too long on that. I'm pretty sure that's an instant kill if you're not quick enough to move out of the way. So that's why it's worth giving that warning. Whoa, well, these cats are just for the heck of it. That probably wasn't a good idea. I took damage. Uh, let's see. Go down there. Now, where if I can land on those canisters? They could be blocking my way for all I know. Yep, they are. I was actually with grabbing the ledge for a split second there. Didn't react fast enough, unfortunately. Actually took a lot of damage in this little two, a lot more than I thought I would. Might be the pet potential chance that I might die on this. But if I do, I don't want to imagine how far how far I'll be set back. If it's back at the beginning of this level, I'm gonna be a little furious, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh. Good thing I had that drone device out, otherwise that could have been catastrophic for me. I'll have to use more of that just because I saved my hide that time. Even though I probably used like half of this capacity already. So go up these stairs. There's another Gatatron vendor here. This pretty much acts your halfway point. I'm actually gonna reload on a couple of weapons. Let's see if I have enough cash to do it with. Uh, three for Visibomb Gun. I use the Devastator right now. That's a real beauty. And I know how to rely a lot on the blaster for this. So that should be enough. Oh, that's a nice one. Max on the Prositor. Now I'm good on the bomb whip as well. Yeah, I'm good on my newer weapons as well. So we'll use the Visibomb Gun and take out that tower over there. Because there's a force field. Right in front of the elevator that we just stepped out of. Did I get that bolt? No, I didn't. Good. It's back to 4,000 bolts. That's not really bad. Okay, don't go up the stairs yet because that rocket, that large space fighter will shoot you. Best to take out with a visible gun before you even go up this mini flight of stairs. I have no idea what where those drone devices were going for a second. Just saw him come into the camera for some random reason. It's pretty weird. So go up to this higher level before you take all those canisters. And you'll get four crates up here. That was weird. I did a glide... Well, not really a glide jump, a boost jump, and... I didn't get the range that I wanted. That was really odd. I guess I was kind of holding back on the stick. That's what I wanted to do. Much better, Ratchet. We'll make a Superman impersonator out of you yet. That's what it always looks like to me when I'm doing the, the boost jump with the helipack. Not the helipack, the thruster pack. I also like Ratchet's doing his best Superman impression. Take out all those canisters just for some, for no reason at all. And there's a bolt icon I see. It's actually gonna be right over here somewhere. Whoa! Did that? Oh, those turrets can actually get me right from that angle? I didn't know that. I didn't think those could be that accurate. Kind of surprising. But I know where those turret owners are. Of course, right beyond this trespasser lock. Okay, that took me way longer than I thought it would, admittedly so. I actually thought I'd have the least trouble with that trespasser lock in this level. But that was not the case. At least we were past it, though. Okay, so, uh, that's not gonna work. I think this canister might take out the other two. Yes, it does. For some reason, they always put those canisters just far enough that you can't eliminate them all in one swoop. I don't know why. And of course, like I said before, if we ever come across a bolt icon on our adventure, then we'll use the, the metal detector. 
It's not really a surefire way to grind for bolts. There are better methods in this game, and that's saying a lot because grinding for bolts in this game to begin with isn't that easy to do. But I guess it's kind of okay once you are able to approach a spot. I think the spots for the metal detector are always fixed, so you can always leave a planet and then go back to it so you can regenerate the bolts. Feeling that kind of, uh, I guess got that cheap. I also tried to think of another word other than cheap, but that's the only one I could come up with at that time. These remote bolts here. There's probably be more once over at the enemy section. I'll use a blaster. No, I'll use a proster because it might be coming near me. Yeah, it's much better than the blaster. Oh yeah, there's some block space fires there too. But you can also shoot, maybe they shoot up the enemies for some reason. Okay, they're still alive. I thought they'd be dead. That's surprising. But I think they might be close enough. Hopefully. All right. Able to take him out with one visible gun. That is the best way you can use the visible against those kinds of enemies. Once again, showing the visible at its maximum potential. I love doing that. So don't count out the visible gun just because it looks. It might look like a weaker devastator. It is so so dang powerful, and I love it. Nope. Gotta hold that out manually again. Oh, by the way, you could. Equip the Hydro Pack, but you won't be able to do anything when you're not swimming with it. It's pretty much just acts as Ratchet cannot use Clank at all. So kind of like when we were starting the game as Ratchet. So this would be trying to do a boost jump, I guess. I got that mistake. I got that mistake with the stretch jump from earlier. And this is me trying to do the stretch jump. This is me trying to do the glide. You can't do anything with a Hydro Pack. It's just added for a tougher challenge if you feel like it. If you're relying on Clank too much. Which you really should because he helps for a lot of mobility. For a lot of movement. He can end up saving your life once or twice. Or probably a thousand times if you've been playing as long as I have. Okay, I see there's more gunners over there. Oh, son of a... Shot me! Unfortunately, you can't get to those machine gunners whatsoever, so... I'm actually gonna end here for today, because coming up... There's gonna be quite a huge room that we'll have to do a lot of battling in, so that's why I'm stopping for today. With that being said, next time on Ratchet & Clank, we're gonna continue through the Gaelic base to see if we can find a faster ship to get the Quark. Until we meet again, everyone, farewell for now.